a couple of times. But on the third occasion, people don't even understand what you're saying. But I think he's cracking jokes as far as Mbide is concerned. You, if, you, if you want to say this glass is not sitting properly on this table, say that. Because that's what you want to mean. So just say it the way it is. Communicate. Don't complicate the communication. Use the simple languages, the simple words. I think that's the simplest way. What you think, what you want to communicate is what you write. Not what you think will impress your counterpart. In any case, when you try to make it complex, the meaning gets lost. Although I've been accused of using uh, lots of heavy words in my first book, especially King on the Throne. Mm -hmm. Some people have told me, but the language was too... You know, I, I think there was so much lawyer in me when I was writing that book. In any case, there's lots of legal stuff in it. Quoting articles of, of the Constitution and sections of the different acts and all those things and all the arguments. But the best, I think, piece of writing is the one which flows, which is using ordinary language, the language in use. That is the trick. There is no other. But also, in our time, in my primary school, in my secondary school, especially in all level, our teachers were very particular about syntax. Syntax is the choice of words in our time. By the way, in our time, even intonation counted. You don't say any word the way you want to say it. They would tell us, whichever language you are, you are speaking, speak it properly. You chose to learn that language, then you better speak it properly. So intonation is? The intonation for this is this. They used to teach us those things. I was also very good at English anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I was very good at English anyway, because I used to get very good marks back in the day. But then the teachers used to tell us that if you want to write a good comprehension, make it simple. What did you see during the holidays? Mm. Write it as you saw it. Don't create fiction <laughs> because that may uh, take away the observations you made. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So just to hinge this on communication, um, I belong to I think the generation just before, um, I think um, generation, is it X or Z or something? Yeah. But basically we are, we, we, we are termed as overly zealous, very ambitious, entitled, you know. Mm. And you have uh, a, a lot of success following your legal practice business. Now you've been you know, particular for over, getting to a little over 10 years. So I'm It'll be 11 years in May. 11 years in May, yes. Mm. So I'm certain you've worked with people who are termed that way. You know, what approach do you put to work, perhaps, when working with this? Because I know you work with them now. You probably worked with us. <laughs> Let me just choose us, so far to say, when you, were, when you were still at Bull and Maiga. How do you switch when dealing with um, baby boomers from your time and then us who have a lot that we want to grasp and a lot that we feel we're entitled to? You guys have grown up during a time, you've matured during a time of uh, when communication has become very fast. The, starting with the mobile phone, mm. the mobile phone was introduced in Uganda, I think, in 1997 or 98. Then we graduated from that even went to the to the to the current smartphones the internet social media ultimately so somebody is going to lean against a big car and take a picture and post it for the entire world to upload to Somebody's going to sit in somebody's home and then, or a hotel. Or office. Or office. Every moment, information is flying over our heads. 
millions of pieces of information. So the life become fast paced. And people watch series, the Kardashians. There is, there is, we've got series about Kampala Cream or something like that. Yes, Kampala which Cream. Which has started. Mm. I don't know how far they will go. But I wish they succeed. So the young people, therefore, want everything they chance upon. Actually, it's not even chancing upon them because it's, it's all around you. Mm. You've got the world in the palm of your hands. You've got a smartphone. You see everything in 10 minutes watching someone giving you pieces of advice. Who is he? So the young people, because of that, think their lives can be like the ones they they look at every time they, they have the phone in their hands, you know. Zari is going to post things. She's got these big cars, you know. The artists, the singers here we have in Kampala, they're going to post big cars and big houses and all these things and glamour. Then the young people, probably your age, fail to distinguish between reality what is it? and fascination. I mean, at times even <laughs> fiction. And they fail to work diligently. If you want to drive a Rolls Royce, you practice law for two years, you're going to steal to buy a Rolls Royce. You're going to have integrity issues. Because a Rolls Royce is a very expensive car. And I will tell you this, you don't make money in a short time. It's a lie. No one is ever rich before they are 50. Nobody should ever tell you they are rich before they are 50. It's, it's very difficult. I've been around for some time. I only know about one or two people who have been actually rich before they are 50. Genuinely. Yes, genuinely. Of course you can steal the money. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about working and building your resources and becoming rich. It's very hard, next to impossible before you are 50. But here you are, you are 30. You are 30 and you want to drive a 500 million car. You're going to have to steal money. You're going to cheat the client. The client's money is going to be paid into the farm account and you are, you are not going to pass it on. Because you want to buy a 500 million car. I advise people that a car one drives should not cost more than 10% of his profits. And more than 10% of the profits. If you want the business to grow. So if you made a profit of a billion shillings, you shouldn't buy a car exceeding 100 million shillings. Because this money is needed for the business to grow. Businesses only grow because we reinvest in them. There is no other way. And you reinvest with money. <laughs> you know. So. Sustainability. Yeah. So social media creates these false impressions about the kind of lives people lead. And then it is going to affect their integrity because they want to acquire those things very quickly. I built this house for 10 years. From 1996 to 2006, the way you see it. It took me 10 years. I would uh, build... Uh, I would use six bags of cement a week. One bag a week. The only time I would use many, many bags was when we were doing this floor mm -hmm. because you have to do a slab and you do it once and then these things when you're doing the... But otherwise, the general works one bag a day because that's what I could afford. At the time. At that time. And... Well, when people see it now, 
<laughs> they don't know how long it took me to build it. It took me 10 years. Because I wanted a reasonably big house and I didn't have the money to get it quickly. So the young people should practice patience. Let me tell you something. When you work hard, when you are focused, you will always get the money. It's a direct consequence of hard work. Getting money is a direct consequence of hard work. You can fail. You can fall down. You rise. You fall down a second time. You rise. You fall down a third time. You rise. You can even fall down a fourth time. You rise. You cannot work hard on when you're focused and you don't get the money. Because I'll tell you this again, luck must be created. <laughs> they say, it, you know, it favors prepared minds. You cannot get lucky unless you're working hard, diligently. You must roll up your sleeves, bend your back, scoop the dirt. You jump onto a border board and run to court and defend your client. They tell you that the bus from Luzira is coming to court. Jump on a border border. It won't take away your law degrees. Go to court and defend the man. Get his freedom. He'll trust you. He'll recommend you to other clients. You'll get the money. Be honest with them. They will trust you. They'll give you the fees eventually. And you'll get the money. <laughs> That's how it is. Interesting. So if the young people think... They're going to build these kind of houses in a short time. They're going to steal the money. That's what I'm saying. They're going to steal the money. To be, a, to be able to, to build these big houses, they, they're going to steal the money. And what do they say in Luganda? Everything has a price. For a thief, it's the knock in the head. You know? <laughs> so you can you know lawyers who have been arrested yes. and sent to jail there is even a lawyer who appealed all the way I think to the court of appeal last week he took clients money why should you take clients money because this client is the one who is going to recommend other clients you eventually get the money you just have to be patient for me I never believed that it's important for me to impress anyone with the things which, yeah, I never believed that I need to impress anyone. <laughs> I, I, I never believed that I've got to impress anyone with, with, why should I impress anyone? I mean, what happens when I impress another lawyer with a car with money which I stole from a client? And what, what happens if I drive that big car? To impress the lawyer, to impress other clients. I never believed in that. I believed in doing the work that the client wants me to carry out. I always believed this man, this work is going to sustain me. Yeah, like I told you, we used to buy cars. We bought the, 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 the Camrys at that time, 1998, and there were some shivers here and there. But we had that stage when we could do it. Going by the formula, the yes. 10 percent. Yeah, but also we were, we were building the client base mm. and we, could, we had the money to do it. Mm. So you can impress people a little if you have the money. It's okay. What I'm worried about is the young people trying too hard, you know, to impress the, the other lawyers or maybe to impress the ladies for the, for the male lawyers. Mm. If you try to impress a lady, <coughs> you know, she will eventually find out they don't have the money. And then you're going to be in trouble. If she's that impressionable, she's going to run away. And you're left at ground zero. You're left at ground zero. If she believes you are focused, she'll stand by you. She'll be by your side. I'm not an idealist, but this is reality. And it seems to have worked for you. I mean, you're still married to that. 
Yeah, my wife. Children. Yeah. All married. Yes. We, we met in the university and uh, we were happy with each other. And we didn't see any reason why we couldn't get married. I didn't impress her at all. My wife, she was staying in Nakasaru with her dad. She was a, he was a civil servant. And I took her to a, a, a two-room house when I married her. <laughs> no trying to impress her. I think she knew I was focused. I think that's what she believed I, I was focused. This goes for the young ladies as well. You know, look for the men who are focused. Don't worry so much about how they present themselves. They're going to lie to you that they've got the money when they don't. So, this is what I can say in answer to that. <laughs> Interesting. I'm tempted to jump into family, but just before we get into that, mm. we were discussing our nature as young lawyers and some of our flaws. Truthfully, you know, not everyone is like that, and not at the same level. Um, and I know you've worked with these people. Um, one thing that I'd want to understand is, you've worked with them, you've still been able to achieve, you know, do you draw the line? Do you mentor? Do you, you know, do you turn them away? How have you been able to get the results that you want? Well, I, <coughs> I, would, I, I used to tell, now I'm, I'm, I'm on sabbatical. I think those mm. who watching us should know that. Mm. Because of my role as the Katikiro, mm. I'm on sabbatical. I haven't practiced since 2013. But mm. before then, I would always tell the lawyers, when you do something wrong, I would tell you. Okay. I, I think outright. I think this is wrong. It's not good for you. We had a lawyer at some, some time. Mm. I won't mention his name because you could even know him. He, when, when he would see Mr. Wood or myself with a good pen, he, he would try to acquire the same pen. By purchasing? Yeah, maybe he would go to the bookshops and acquire a similar pen. But the pen can be very expensive. You know, a pen, you know, somebody gave me a pen worth 100 pounds, 100 pounds. Okay. Yeah, 100 pounds. That's half a million shillings, when right? When was this? Yeah? When was this? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Pounds are pounds are pounds. No, somebody, I've, I've been given pens, very expensive pens, over time. But when somebody gave me that pen, actually, I was in legal practice. He's a friend of mine. He went to the UK and gave me a pen worth a hundred pounds. And I would, you know, one time I went with this, with this pen to Mr. Murwana, just James Murwana. Mm -hmm. Mr. Murwana was, had a transaction and I was the lawyer in between. And you know, I had this expensive pen in my jacket. I'm a youngish lawyer. I want to impress him a little. And all the papers, I prepared all the papers. Uh, I think those days we used to use a fax. I think I faxed them to him. He read through the agreement. And the other part also read through the papers. So we went. Mm -hmm. And it's me who went to him. You know, Mr. James Mulano was a big deal. When you are working for a matter that big, you know, Mr. Lawyer, go to him. <laughs> so I went to him in his office in the industrial area. Mm. Went into his office. Went, now, I went with the final copies now, which, which they had okayed for signing. Placed them on his table, pulled out my pen. I think I wanted to impress him. So he looked at it. He got it from my hands. He looked at it, you know. Then he closed, he, he replaced the, the, the yes. cover, then put it back in my jacket. Then he pulled out a nice, a nice clear ball, 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 what do they call them, ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen, yes. Because he was such a marketer. Mm. I will never forget that. Of course, James Murano was a wealthy man. Mm. He could mm. buy a million of those <laughs> pens that I had. But then because he was manufacturing the nice, yeah, the nice little pens. I think they call nice clear pens. The, the, I think they're called nice clear. Yes, nice clear pens. Nice clear, and I think it was costing two hundred shillings. I don't even remember. Yeah. That's what we used to sign. He said even this pen can sign an important agreement like this one. That's what he said very calmly, ever so calmly. And the other one stayed in the jacket. That was a lesson for me. But 
what impressed me about him specifically was the marketing aspect of it. You know, of course, I was young. How are you going to impress Mwana with a pen, anyway? <laughs> so, you yeah. Effort, so. You so we had a young lawyer who wanted to do the kind of things that we did, and we felt he was placing, he was placing himself under a lot of pressure. We were the partners who were older than him, who earned more than him, you know. And I would tell him, hey man, take it easy. You'll get there, take it easy. You don't, you don't have to ape what we do. And I would do that all the time with the young lawyers. Where they make mistakes, I would tell them. Where they make good progress, I would commend them. Where, you know, some, some young lawyers would do amazing stuff. You're doing some research for a case and gives you things you, you know, preparing court papers and they're perfect. And then you say, hey man, you know, you're doing, you're good. 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 Then I'll tell them, I'm going to start learning from you. I would tell that to young lawyers. I'm going to learn from you. Looks, you're very good at this. I think it is good to say thank you to someone. When someone does something good, it's always good. Tell them you've done a good job. Like I know in Wool and Mike, I'm told, You've done great stuff with, uh, with this, uh, um, this uh, what do you call it, digital presence of the firm. Thank you. Oh, I've been told, and I think you, you're doing a good job. That's how the world is. If you, are not, if you don't have a digital footprint, you're going to stay behind. The world is very, very fast. Uh, actually, in neighboring Kenya here, People file, people go to court, they do everything digitally. So if we want to move closer to them, we've got to go digital. So I think a law firm must have a digital footprint because that's how the, way the world works. When I was in law school, when we were in law school, we would have so many textbooks these volumes, you know the Katendes? Uh, yes. And you know the Katende, the book called Katende, the, the law of business organizations in East Africa? Yes. yes. Thick book, I think it's 2,000 pages. Then you go to the Sheshan Five Foot. Then you've got all these big volumes and the acts of parliament and all these. Now they, you can have them on your laptop. Or mobile phone. On your mobile phone. That's how the world is moving. Interesting that you actually mentioned technology. Um, practice is evolving. We have AI as talking to a very, very respectable lawyer. I, I'm certain she's watching and I was telling her that with all that you do, funny that you don't have an assistant lacking around, you know, to maybe book an appointment or receive a call. And she was telling me that she has an AI assistant, <laughs> you know, to aid her. Well, as certain people believe that, um, you know, all of this is a disruption to you know to the legal profession what's your take i don't think it's a disruption every time there is a there is a technological change or advancement for the short period looks like a disruption mm. at the start at the start you know when the cars were you know when the cars were were were, were invented in europe specifically in the uk the the, the first opposition to the cars were the rich people mm. because they owned the horses and the technology for exhaust hadn't been developed. They would make a lot of noise. So the, the, the horses would break out of their enclosures and they would run all over the place. You know, they would even ru get developed running tummies out of fright. Oh. And the rich people, because they're influential, were opposed to the, this new machine. Incidentally, Apolo Kagwa and Ham Mukasa, Apolo Kagwa of the 19th agreement, mm -hmm. and Ham Mukasa was in Chagwe. Should have been the first Ugandans to move in a car because they went for the coronation, I think, of King, King Edward in 1902. They refused to jump into the car because they said, this machine might swallow us. It might swallow us, and what shall we tell the Kabaka if they, this machine swallows us? But that was the invention of the car. Now, I told you when... Uh, when we started the law firm with one typewriter and then eventually we'd get a typing pool because the work has gotten much now 
You've got many girls. It used to be girls behind the typewriters. They are now elec 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 you know, electrical, electrical typewriters. And many of them in a typing pool. But then the computers started being used. So Francis and I said we should get a desktop for each lawyer. Way back. We didn't, have, we didn't even know how to use the computers. The, the far cry was that the secretaries are going to lose their jobs. Mm. But technology creates new jobs. Every technological advancement creates new jobs. You know? When the mobile phone was, was, was introduced to Uganda, I think in 1997, 8, I rejected them for the first few months. Because I had a phone in my house. I had a phone in the office. We had phones in the UTL office. UTL phones. Yes. And I had a phone in Bulang. I had an office in Bulang. So I was like, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, they'll find me. Call me home. Call me in the office. Then we started, the kingdom started in Java Times newspaper. It is now defunct. Mm -hmm. And they forced, and I was the executive director of the paper because you've got to take quick decisions. So the mobile phone I held, the first mobile phone I held belonged to the kingdom. I've never looked back. But when AI starts, you know, and we fully embrace it, it will create a, a new set of jobs. We, share, we need to know how to practice law in the new digital era. I don't know how it's going to be disruptive. People talk about that a lot, but I don't think there is a machine that is going to replace human beings in our lifetime. I just don't think. Who puts, you know, AI together? It's man. So how can that machine replace man? We've got to learn to work within the new era. Like I told you, we used to have these physical books. Now you have the volumes on your, on your mobile phone, you know? And so law practice must also embrace technological advancements. I noticed even with the computer, some law firms took quite a while to adjust. To adjust. You people don't know that, but we witnessed it. You know, I don't even know. The other day I was joking with Francis. How did we draw all these agreements? You know, you would draw it with your hand. You know, like a set agreement, a simple thing like a set agreement or a plaint. And you make copies? Hmm? And make copies? No, no, you mm. draw it with your hand and then they type it. They type it out. Then they bring you the typed version and you make corrections. And then they go back to, to retype. I don't know how we used to work. The speed at which we used to work. Now every lawyer has his desktop, laptop or whatever. And it is easy to draw these agreements. But copy and paste is very dangerous. That's why I tell you that machines cannot replace mankind. mankind. I saw a letter, I think, by a minister in southern Sudan. A friend of mine sent it to me. They sent a message out to the public, I think the civil servants, telling them they were going to have a, a long holiday for Christmas. Now, he used that same letter for Easter, for the Easter holiday. Oh, dear. <laughs> yes. And he said, I wish all of you a Merry Christmas and prosperous New Year. But he was talking about having a break between Holy Thursday and, good, and Easter Monday. That's copy and paste. And we love our president. I know AI will have to sort that out mm -hmm. eventually. AI wouldn't allow you to print that kind of letter. Mm -hmm. Still, I think we need to work with the new technologies. That's how the world is going to be moving. And there is no way you are going to, um, to stay behind. And it will create other opportunities. Now, for example, when the computers started being used, these computer guys who come to service them or to install them or to build the networks within the offices, all these are jobs. I'm sure there will be, even these guys who were working on the computers also needed the lawyers mm -hmm. for, for contracts, for, for, for all sorts of things, for, for setting up companies to do the computer business, for all sorts of things. And the computer use actually generated us more money. Using computers generated us more money than before. 
I'm sure the same will be with the AI. You better take that direction. So it makes you more efficient. It makes you more efficient. It makes you faster. It, it's going to create lots of chance opportunities. And, 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 you know, like I told you, you would write an agreement with your hand. With your hand, with a pen. You know, Patrick Semogere, whereas Patrick Semogere is the owner of Block 00, zero Plot in, in, in Reza, and when we're at, with your hand, how much time did we take to draft, one agreement. to draft one agreement? And, you know, in those days when you started law practice, you'd find clients, many of them seated in offices in big numbers, they are waiting to be served. Now, I don't see that much in many law firms. I don't go to them so much. But because of, you know, advancement in technology. I mean, you can have 10 agreements in a day or more. or more. Why should people come and sit in the waiting room an entire day waiting for one, you know, an agreement of six pages? You do it fast. You send it to them by email. They read through. They say, this is not what I told you. You correct it. And then you print the final copies for their signature. So AI is going to make work easier, smarter, faster. We've got to embrace it. We've got to see how it works for us. I, it's your turn, actually. You, what do you call yourselves? Which generation are you? X? Well, I think it's your turn now because now you know how to use these things better than we do. And, and the uh, exposure. The exposure it brings you. It should enable you to make yourself some good money and to work more, more, more yeah. fast more efficiently. and more efficiently. So, um, interestingly, we, we all are aware that clients out there do need our work. And um, I think stemming from that and uh, the idea that we have that, you know, AI is taking some of our jobs, you know, um, is the challenge in the numbers of lawyers coming in, are we failing to repurpose? You know, the question I'm trying to ask basically is why, you know, from your point of view really, are there so many of us young lawyers on the streets of Kampala? You know, and, and now it's becoming something more accepted, being called a street lawyer. You see, Nature is such that it takes the best. Whether lawyers are 10 or 100, there will be some good lawyers from within the 10, better than the others. Largely depending on the way they work, how smart they are. Smart they are. So if lawyers are 1,000, we shall still get some good lawyers. Incidentally, this country has 44 million people. The lawyers are not too many. What we should be concerned about is economic activity. There should be economic growth. What creates jobs for lawyers is economic growth, actually. That's why uh, the lawyers who practice from around 1990, 1990s, the 2000s, there was good and fast economic growth. Made themselves some good money. It's economic activities and growth that creates work for lawyers by and large. Because when, for example, people want to invest in Uganda, they are going to, depending on what one is investing in, if it's an industry, a factory, you're going to need land. Then you're going to need to register your company, float it. Then you're going to, all this will likely be work for lawyers, you know. So the lawyers are not very many. It's the economic activities that are slow. Just slow down a bit. Yes. But whatever the situation, the good lawyers will emerge successful. In all situations, because I'll tell you this, in the 80s and 90s, the law firms were few. The lawyers were few. Still, there were very good lawyers who were known. Even passing others. Even back then, there are certain law firms that were known as being dependable. When the law firms were few. Today, when there are many, still there are law firms which can be trusted, which can be relied on. 
So it's a question of how one works. I do not think that competition has ever been a problem. Competition brings the best, awesome. the very best out of us. When we were setting up Bull and Mag Advocates, we chose City House. City House was sort of a hub for lawyers. We had senior lawyers like Kayondo and Co. Henry Kayondo passed away. We had Patel and Co. That's where senior counsel James Nangwala started his practice. He was at City House. We had the Chamba de Kabugo and Co. We had, uh, I think, Ruere and Co. Advocates. We, such senior practitioners were operating from City House when we started. And someone said, but how do you go and set up your law firm next to these big law firms? And we said, we want to be where the action is for lawyers. If this is the hub for lawyers, then maybe if a client goes to these big law firms and is not served quickly, he will join you, just walk into our, our chambers. Probably that's why we hit it off quite fast from the very beginning. Very first day. So I do not think that you succeed because you've been afraid of competition. Actually, you might think you are very, very good until you notice somebody else. You know, when you look over your shoulder, someone is catching up with you, then you realize you're not moving fast enough. So competition doesn't stifle performance. It, it instead brings the best out of us. So the young people should try to do their best. All these things we've been talking about since we started this show will make some people shine. Just like it was that some people didn't shine, even when the lawyers were few. Some people will shine now when there are many because they are good. You can never keep a good man down. <laughs> you, 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 you've talked about times in which it was times when legal practice was very prominent, um, very vibrant, and I guess very rewarding as well. Currently, maybe it's because the post-pandemic you know, slum, law firms are facing unprecedented challenges, mm. some people are downsizing. I know there are some, you know, because we don't advertise, so you never get to know some that have probably had to go shop. What does it go to certain people? You know, um, Bull and Maga was there then, and I mean it's now 2023, I think. A year or two post, you know, opening up. It's now 2024. It's now 2024, yes. Mm. A, year, a year or two after, you know, the full the opening up of business and etc. Mm. The family is celebrating 30 years, you know. How have you sustained Bull and Maga, you and Mr. Bull? through tough times, you know, keeping it on a curve of steady growth? Well, first of all, the, in, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy is, is real. Because there was no production by and large. Many economic activities came to a halt. So it's not only low farms. Many business, uh, businesses were affected negatively because of the pandemic. So if law firms are affected by the pandemic or they're facing hard times, that is expected because like I said a few minutes back, it's economic activities and economic growth that makes law practice vibrant. Because <laughs> the lay people think a work of a lawyer is to defend criminals. But you and I know that we work on a lot of things besides the criminal aspect of, uh, of, the, of, the law. of the law. We work on so many things. And when there is economic growth, the lawyers are going to get a lot of work and they're going to earn well. So the pandemic closed banks, closed companies, closed, so everything was closed. I think everything was closed except the industries. I think, I think a few markets, food markets. Some food markets, and even some of the industries closed because there was no one to buy the products. And people were sent home. So the impact of COVID-19 is real for everyone. But 
about sustaining the operations of the farm for 30 years. I think it's simple. You, you, you have to have a budget. Budgeting is one of the things that is very crucial for the survival of a farm. You that for Bolange. Yes. November, so is that something that you started back then? Budgeting? Budgeting, planning the entire year. Yes. We, we were always doing that in Bula and Maiga because you're going to have a good run, so to speak, get some money, then you're going to have a dry spell. Now, if you spend everything you get during the good run, how will you pay your bills when there is a dry spell? I think budgeting is key, but discipline is even more important. Because you can budget, and then you don't have the discipline to control you, the way you spend the money or what you spend it on. So I think the best way to ensure that business goes on unimpeded is by being disciplined. You budget. If you budgeted, you know, uh, 10 million, that's what you should spend. Of course, you can exceed it at times. But that should be for a good reason. Otherwise, if you get money and then you decide to buy a plot of land, and you know the pressures, especially with young lawyers. I know when you go to court and you meet other young lawyers, you are having conversations during you know, adjournments or before the judge comes. I bought a plot of land along Entebbe Road. Man, Webadja is good. I know how young lawyers talk. The breeze. You know, it's nice. I can get you a plot next to mine. You know? And then, I bought this car. You know? I don't know whether it is wise to buy those things if they're not within your budget. Impulsive purchasing, is that? That's what they call it. We had a client. Actually, we still have that client. I won't mention him. Mm. Because... Confidentiality for clients is key. Still, Bull and Maga's client uh, is, a is a still a client of Bull and Maga. He said, avoid impulsive purchasing. That's what he would advise us against. Because you've gotten this check, tomorrow you want to go and buy new things. Did you plan for them? Plan for the things you want to buy in the year, not because you've gotten this check. So, I think it is very wise to avoid impulsive purchasing. You can spoil yourself a little. I'm not telling young lawyers that mm. when you get a windfall, you, mm. you know, you, you, you must say, Senior Counsel Charles Peter Maiga said you must not do impulsive purchasing. I believe in enjoying the fruits of your hard work. I believe in that a lot. In fact, when you invest, and law practice is some kind of investment. When you invest, you must enjoy. Celebrate a little. Celebrate a little. Enjoy every little achievement. It is very important. You know? So, um, if you can take out your family for dinner, something which you don't usually do, because there was a windfall, that's okay. But I am, I'm sure they understand what I mean. When it's impulsive, that's when you'll find yourself in trouble during the dry spell. And then you talk about closing shop or downsizing or things like that. Speaking of closing shop, OHT, there are many, you mentioned very many vibrant law firms. Now, I know myself and people my age may not know them because of our age, but genuinely there are law firms that were great back then that didn't outlive, you know, the founding partners. And um, I think my question would be, how are you and why you were perhaps cultivating, grooming, mentoring people? You people should grow into partners. <laughs> to ensure, yes. It's entirely up to you. Look, I'm, I'm a grandfather. grandfather. The years I've lived are longer than the years I will live ahead. 
most probably, <laughs> in a way. So, realistically, there must, be, there must be people who are going to carry on them the mantle. Mm. But these people must be ready to grow into partners of Bull and Mike Advocates. Because when we become old, really, probably even now we are old, Massively. how shall we be able to keep things going? We've, we've been talking about all these things, that we are, we are living in the digital era. era and all these things. Things are moving so fast. We should take a back step and let the young people carry on. I think the best way that can happen is when they're partners. You must believe with your heart and soul and mind that this project will work for you when you become a partner. If you are half-hearted, it's going to be hard for you. Tomorrow you'll want to run away and start your own law firm. Mm. But believe you me, you will go through what you've gone through. There are no two ways about it. And you know some of these things. Yes. Some of our friends went, they started law firms, they've closed shop. You know this. And here you are. So, the young lawyers must be prepared. Say, I'm committed to Bull and Mike Advocates. I want to be a partner. Unless we close the doors for you. That could be difficult for you. But if the doors are open for you to become partners, then... That guarantees the, longev the longevity of the firm, the future of the firm. We want the law firm to go to 50 years, 100 years. When we are dead and you are dead, and probably people say, you know, 100 years from today, who knows? People might be viewing this interview. Who knows? These days we listen to broadcasts from the BBC of 100 years back. 100 years ago. <laughs> so who knows? They say, oh yeah, these guys talked about the longevity of the firm. And here we are. Um, some of the old farms we have, like Hunt and Greg, now they're called Katera and Kagumire. Yeah. I think they were started in 1902 or something. Yes, that, that's actually, I think, H and G now. Hmm? H and G? That must be H and G. Hunt and Greg, that's H and G now. They are no longer Katera and Kagumire. Mm -hmm. They originally they were Katera and Kagumire. Yes. Then they were originally Hunt and Greg. Yes. Then they became Katera and Kagumire. Now they are back to H and and G. John Fisher Kanyame, I think, is one of the partners, senior counsel. And I think Mr. Kagumire is still alive. He must be quite aged now. It is good they are still there. They, Greg and Hunter were, 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 were white. They were, I think they were Britons. But the people who are doing the job are carrying on. That's what we want for Bull and Mega Advocates. But like I said... It depends on you, the young lawyers working there, or the young lawyers who join later. They must put their heart and soul in the firm, sit at their own, and, and, and work towards becoming partners. And if the doors aren't blocked for you, that's what you should aim for. Aim for. Because if you want to start your law firm, you'll still go through the same route. Mm -hmm. There are no tricks about this. The challenges are the same everywhere. So the initiative, the drive one may have for starting their own law firm is the initiative and drive they should bring where they work. That's what I believe. We've had this open policy for quite some time now. And, uh, well, we shall see where it ends. You are here. I hope you can be a partner in a fairly short time. Amen. And... Uh, you make, and you know, this is what I believe. When the young people take over, every time that happens, the growth of the law firms is always exponential. I've seen it with Mugerwa and Matov. The, Mr. Mugerwa was Attorney General once of Uganda, and Mr. Matov was Solicitor General. They had a law firm, which is now Max. Senior Counsel Kanyeres started working with them. I think he was working with Vikaten and Sempe, but then he joined them. Oichitiwa Daudi Mpanga was with them. Incidentally, that law firm was started by Daudi Mpanga's father, 
the late Frederick Sempewa. But he died in 1976. So eventually the law firm became, um, became Mugirwan Motor Advocates. When Mr. Masembe joined them, now they are Marks. But when they took over, the, the, the original partners were still alive. Mr. Matov died early, but Umukungu Mugerwa has just died three, four years back. But he had stopped practice. He had retired. But when the young tax came on, and I think the goodwill that the old practitioners had built for the farm was very well used by the new tax, the young tax, the Masembes, the Makubuyas, the Sekatawas, the, I think there was Philip Karugaba, but he left and started his farm. There was, I think, Adrico. And the farm grew. That, that happens normally. We look at several and Rule. Ochitiba uh, Godfrey Rule is alive. I think it's about 90 now. I'm not so sure. 80, late 80s maybe. Mr. Sebalu died a few years back. They had that farm. Chief Justice Worms worked with them after he retired as Chief Justice for a bit of time. Now, when the young lawyers, I, uh, there is Sebu uh, Mukasa, um, there is, um, um, there is, uh, there is, uh, right. The name will come. There That's is right. a, there is a, yeah, but, but when they came on board, you know, the, 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 the farm grew the more. That's, I think, what will happen to Wool and Maiga when we eventually retire totally. You guys should come over and you, farm grows. Speaking of retirement, mm. you speak vehemently well about your family. I'd never had a chance to see you operate in close proximity with one of your children. And today I was happy to see you with Gabriella. The way she talks about you, the way she refers to you. She, there is a relation here, you know, that one would often wonder if, you know, wonder when you got the time to do the work, you know, work life, you know, personal life balance, to be, to have such relationships built, you know. Your marriage has lasted so many years. And it has clearly been a good example that you have your first, you know, your first two children being girls unmarried. And now CJ, who we thought would get married after some of us, is also now finally married. So surely that was a good example set there. How did you strike the balance, you know, as we, as we wind up? Well, my family always comes first. I've been a very busy person for a very long time. But for me, Sunday has always been family day. Mm. I was always home. Even when I went for events and all these things, I'd always come back, try to the best of my ability to have lunch with my family. Then I would take my children to school. I took all these girls to school myself because I would come back home late, Monday to Friday, late. And then during the day, I'm very busy. I would always take them to school. The, in primary school because my kids, I wouldn't take them to boarding schools in primary school because I wanted them to be close to me in primary school and I would take them to school. I wouldn't miss a, a school day. When they went to boarding schools, I would never miss a visitation day, ever, except if I was out of the country. And I would even program myself such that I can go and see them. You see, being a parent is a full-time job. Being a family person is a full-time job. You've got to invest in it like it is with a full-time job. Like I've been saying, if you want to be a good lawyer, you must work very hard to become a good lawyer, to succeed as a good lawyer. You've got to work hard. It can't just happen. You cannot build a relationship, a relationship in the family just because there is connection created by blood. You've got to invest in the relationship. You've got to have time for your family. You've got to have time for your wife or your husband. You've got to have time for your children. And when you invest in them, 
they invest back in you. <laughs> so when I asked my daughter to come and help me set up this thing, she's married, she's got her own family. She came to help me. She came to help me out. So you must have time. When you get married, you must have time for your family. You must have time for your family, however busy you will be. And if it concerns your family, you must prioritize it. That's the only way you can, I think, build a relationship with your children or your spouse. You must invest in them. So even with, it, even with all these priorities, and I'll take you back to, you know, to the 30, 30 year anniversary dinner, you did mention that even at 60 years of bull and mic, I don't expect to be moving with a walking stick. So I trust there was time in there for a bit of exercise. Oh, I, I even, to, I even to, today, I exercise three times a, a week, strictly, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Oh. Whether I'm in the country or here, in, or here at home. I, I exercise with my staff now in Vlange because I want them to be fit. I want them to be healthy. You know, when you exercise, you get a clear mind. You fight off diseases. Of course, we all shall die, but we should Somewhere. die in our time. So it's very important to exercise. These days we, we, we encourage uh, everyone to exercise. If you can exercise every day and take off 45 minutes, that's enough. But when I exercise, I take off at least one hour. It's a real exercise, by the way. It's not just <laughs> for sure. Uh, you know, I used to go to the gyms before I was named Katiki and all these things. Now I work out with my staff to encourage them. I could still go to the gyms. But for my staff, we don't even have a gym in Ulang. We work out in an open space. In the grounds? In the grounds. We just lie down on the ground. Whatever the instructor tells, tells, tells us to do, we do it. But then I used to go to the gyms and I would be amused by the, especially young girls. They come with all the makeup for, for a workout. Now, lip gloss and all these things and they got the mobile phones and every five minutes she's talking on the phone that's not how you exercise you go and concentrate and work out a full hour minimum should do if you do three times a week but young people like you could even do every day and now it's okay but i think three times a week is enough so it helps me to do all this work because i think i'm fit and I'm fit because I work out. I mind what I eat. Diet. Yes, don't, don't eat too much food. Some young lawyers eat a lot of food because they've got the money to buy it. It's not good. I mean, the people who need a lot of food are heavy weight lifters. Mm. You know? What are they called? The gorillas of this world. Kick Those boxes. are the guys who need a lot of food because they use a lot of energy. But for God's sake, you're a lawyer. You sit before a computer, you, you read a lot of volume, you got the court. Why do you need so much meat? The body doesn't need it. And if you eat a lot of it, you're going to be unhealthy. It's that simple. <laughs> so so um, just a quick reminder before we wind up to our viewers. One, we thank you for the feedback that you've given us as we, you know, as we went on with the show. Um, we ask you to continue giving us feedback, comments, and for those that were unable to get into with the WTT, well, we'll most likely find a way to get those questions that are, you know, extremely, extremely important to, you know, to get them answered with time, you know, bit by bit. So Shiva, as we conclude, really, you've hinted a lot on principles um, that you live by, that you and Mr. Boy have lived by. Um, if you could, you know, in, in a few words, really, um, share with a young lawyer, um, together with passing shots, really, what are some things that someone should, that perhaps you lived by, that you think someone should live by, to be able to, you know, rise in a sustainable manner, you know, and um, in our, um, we called it, um, I think, should, should we say fair manner, without stealing, without, um, you know, without creating the wrong brand out there, um, in private legal practice? Hard work. One, hard work. Mm. Two, commitment. You've got to be committed to your work. You've got to be committed to your clients. 
three, integrity. I don't think there is anyone in Uganda who can say he's been cheated by Bola and Maiga advocates. I, I don't think so. Unless, it's, unless it is some misunderstanding. But I don't think there is anyone who can say I've been cheated by Bola and Maiga advocates. They collected my money and they didn't pass it on to me. Or they sold my land and they didn't pass on the money to me. Or they did this. It's possible that this basement came late. Mm -hmm. But cheating a client, we've, I don't think we've ever done that. And if you are hardworking, if you are committed, if you've got integrity, people can trust you, then living decently is a direct consequence of these three aspects. It could take time, but that's fine. If you work hard, if you're committed, if you've got integrity, you'll, always, you, you'll have money to pay rent, you'll have money to buy food, you'll have money to buy clothing, you can even have a small car, eventually a big enough car. And eventually you'll become rich. In any, case, like this. in any case, what is being rich? For me, being successful is being happy. There is no amount of money that defines wealth. One time I was talking to Mr. Sudir Pareria, and he, he was shocked when I referred to him as a rich man. Way back when he had just started the resort in Munyonyo. Speak resort. Yeah, but by my standards, he was very rich. I think he was aspiring to become as rich as he is today, maybe, I don't know. But he denied that he was rich. So, what is success? Success is happiness. I know many people who are very rich. I'm talking about rich people who are not happy. I can't name them. And then I know people who don't have all that much, but they are really happy people. So what you need in life is happiness. If you are happy, then you are successful. So a young lawyer should strive to be happy. When you are hardworking, let me tell you, hard work brings a lot of joy. Because you get satisfied that you accomplished this. That you are committed to your client, to your work, and you've in, got integrity. You'll go and have a nice weekend. When you've got a clear conscience, you'll be a very happy man. And when that happens, you're successful. Eventually, you'll build the big houses. This house, you may think it's big. I've seen houses ten times as big as this house. So, I'm happy the way I am here. Although I've entered and even lived in very big houses with other people. I'm happy where I am. <laughs> so for me, it is what is in your heart that counts. You're not in the competition with the world or anybody. Just do what is good for you. Do it well. Enjoy the things that you, know, that you, you love. There are certain things you cherish. Enjoy them. And then you'll have a good life as a young lawyer. When you're my age, you'll be referred to as a successful legal practitioner. And a fulfilled one. And a fulfilled one. Clearly, you are. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, OHTWA. We appreciate you giving this much time, letting the evening with the weekday. We trust your schedule is a little busy or crazy busy tomorrow. We know the Kabaka run is coming up. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate you. And same for you viewers for staying with us this late. We apologize for shooting over a few extra minutes. We promise to do better and please stick with us for the Young Lawyer Series is here to stay. Um, the management and partners of Bull and Maigam with one of them have undertaken to ensure that we make you know, aligned choices and dream the right way. So join us um, mid-September as we you know, have a discussion with someone else uh, from the team at Bull and Maiga and the other members of the Young Lawyer Series and of course MCI that has you know, made this possible. Thank you and have a blessed night. Thank you. If you're still on you, at the start with the nerves, God. They've done very well. I could sell a bit of nerves, but that's also normal.